Um, but here's the other side of the story, and if you're a major imperial power, if you're the imperial power in the world, this, as well as economic growth, is also a very, very important story indeed. These are um, the military, military spending figures. And as you can see, <coughs> the United States is uh, an unchallenged military superpower. There is no other country on the face of the globe that is remotely in this kind of league um, militarily. If you were to add up the following nations that, that appear on this bar chart, if you were to follow, if you were to, if you were, if you were to add China's military spending, to Japan's military spending, to Britain's military spending, to France's military spending, to Russia's military spending, if you were to add them all together, it would still be the case that American military spending were greater than all these, uh, than all these uh, put together. And I think uh, one of the, if not the central factors uh, about understanding the shape of contemporary politics is to have these two things in mind that America is being challenged economically, is in a state of relative economic decline, but it is still overwhelmingly um, the, military, the military superpower. And it's important to understand this because it is this fact which has produced um, the instability, the volatility, and the drive to war in the post-Cold War period. So if we're looking for an explanation of why we saw um, the, full, the first Gulf War, uh, the invasion of Kuwait, followed by war in the Balkans, followed by Afghanistan, followed by Iraq, followed by Libya, followed by the attempts to get an, uh, an intervention in Syria, we have an important element, not the whole explanation, but an important element, perhaps the most important element of an explanation, when we see that American power in the 21st century has a reliance on its military superiority, which is outweighing its still considerable but declining economic power. There is a predilection to use the military stick rather than to use the economic carrot. The economic carrot is growing smaller, it is facing, the American economy is facing challenges, but this is not true militarily. Militarily, it still has absolutely enormous capacity uh, for global military intervention. And of course, an economic power in this condition, in a state of relative economic decline and military superiority, will use its military might to try and reorder um, the, the economic balance in the world. So when we look at what happened after the invasion of Iraq, despite the fact that the invasion of Iraq was a failure in many, many senses, the one sense it won in which it wasn't a failure was that it did allow American corporations, American oil companies, Halliburton and so forth, um, to be the first in line for the contracts in the, in the wake of the invasion of, uh, of, uh, of Iraq. Um, the Caspian, as you will know um, better, better than I, as we all uh, learnt uh, from the 2008 uh, conflict, is one of the flashpoints. The Middle East is a, uh, is a, is a flashpoint, um, but the Caspian and at the other end of the, the Black Sea, um, the, uh, the Balkans have also been flashpoints in this process, partly because, um, as this map shows, of the, uh, of the oil resources and the pipelines, but not only for that, uh, for that reason. And I, I just want to make a, a point here. Um, it isn't just a resource question. Um, Caspian oil, at the moment, is reckoned to be. Nobody really knows what these figures. The, you know, the the, the figures for um, oil reserves are notoriously, um, are no, notoriously uh, untrust untrustworthy. Not least uh, because they're mostly generated from what the oil companies themselves say, and the oil companies um, lie on an absolutely uh, industrial industrial scale. But from what is said, um, the oil reserves are about the scale of uh, North, sea, North Sea oil. Now, that in itself won't get you uh, to a point of conflict. There are um, many people in, in Britain uh, may not like uh, American governments and might not like American foreign policy, but nobody thinks that the uh, Americans are about to um, invade Britain for North Sea, uh, for North sea, uh, North sea oil. It's not just with how much oil there is, but where 
uh, the oil is. It's not just important to be here and to try and influence this part of the globe because of what lies under it, but because of where it is um, in respect of Russia, in respect of Turkey, in respect of um, the attempt by America in the post-Cold War world to essentially extend both NATO and its own uh, military bases in an arc around, uh, around, around Russia. So there is a combination of economic and geopolitical uh, motivation in that particular, in that particular conflict. Um, I want to talk about some of the ways now in which that, uh, that drive for American superiority, 